loves burgers would be nothing without Tina's unapologetic exploration of her sexuality. If love and butts and writing friend fiction is wrong, I don't want to be right. Tina's dated a lot of guys throughout the series, so put your bra on one boob at a time and let's talk about them. I'm Winnie Van Lanningham and this is Tina Belcher's Romantic History. Before we jump into Tina's love life, I want to give a shout out to all of our sponsors on Patreon, especially our super nerd sponsor of the day, Finn Dillon. Thanks to heroes like Finn, Nerdwire gets to read comics, binge Netflix, and do awesome live shows where we get to talk to you guys. If you want to pitch in, head on over to our Patreon page and see if a donation tier works for you. We'll thank you with shout outs, swag, behind the scenes goodies, and more. If you can't spare any dollars, no worries. Liking, sharing, and subscribing are awesome ways to show us your support. Jimmy Jr., no! It will make you want to touch each other's butts. Too late! I don't need a love potion to want to do that stuff with you. Jimmy Pesto Jr. Tina's been crushing on Jimmy Jr. since season one when she kissed him at her 13th birthday party. She's also logged over 3,000 fantasy hours with him. In her friend fiction, Tina and Jeju go nuts touching each other's butts, and it turns out that Jimmy Jr. doesn't exactly hate that plot point. Even when she reads her erotic friend fiction to the whole school, he doesn't even freak out. Was the Jimmy Jr. in your story supposed to be me? Oh, uh, it's a really common name. Yeah, it is. Cool story. But even though Jimmy Jr. has technically been Tina's most consistent lover with six kisses, countless dances, and two real dates, he's not always super clear about his feelings for her. In season three, when Tina asks him to the school dance, he tells her that he wants to keep his options open. That makes sense, they're in middle school. And that frees up Tina to date all the other dudes whose butts she gazes upon. Maybe I don't have to choose. So she begins her sampling of the boy booty buffet of the world by initiating that threesome with Jimmy Jr. and Josh, which is mighty open-minded of her, but the dudes are definitely not into it, so they both split. Later in the season, Jimmy Jr. has another almost date with Tina, but sadly she's suffering from espresso withdrawal and can't hang. Obviously, Jimmy Jr. must have forgiven her for making fun of his speech impediment and forcing him into a dance battle because they totally make out at the end of their date at the Pie in the Sky restaurant. But then, when Tina asks Jimmy Jr. to go to break into the mausoleum, he totally blows her off again. Will this dude ever make up his mind? She does burn him right back by going out with Jordan Hagen, but in the end, they end up watching the land ship parade together. They also kiss during Spin the Bottle at a birthday party, after Jimmy Jr. gives Tina a rose on Valentine's Day and at the end of the school play. But Jeju and teens really connect when Tina is at home controlling a robot that she can drive with a remote control around the school. When Tina gets shoved into the AV locker, Jimmy Jr. busts in to relieve some dance tension. He ends up really opening up to Tina, and the two of them share secrets and emotions that they've never shared before. It kind of turns out to be a weird Joaquin Phoenix falling in love with an iPhone thing, but it's still kind of sweet. Oh my god, he's coming in! Oh. Oh, this is weird. Zombies. One of Tina's weirder sexual fantasies involves making out with zombies. Who's to say why? All I know is that multiple characters in the Bob's Burgers universe think the undead are sexy, because why else would boys for now make a full-on zombie music video? When I see you, I fall apart Like a zombie I got too nervous to ask you out to the I wish I could. Nathan. Nathan is a guy Tina meets while her dad and brother have a run on the local morning news show to showcase Bob's cooking and Jane's beef squash mask. It turns out, however, that Nathan was only using Tina to get to the show's co-host, Pam. He's honestly super rude about it, but luckily Tina takes the high road and tells him that they can stay friends. Spoiler, he sucks and they don't stay friends. Hello, my boyfriend, Nathan. So, how about we take this to the next level? You want to make out? Okay, on three. One, uh... No. I mean, take me backstage to meet Pam. Henry Haber. Tina and Henry get paired together for their museum field trip, and both of them think the other is a major dork. They each vow to help each other become cooler, and in the end, it turns out that they're equally dorky. When they publicize their nerddom for the rest of the class, it actually inspires their classmates to be more confident about their geeky obsessions. I'm a dork for boys and horses and zombies. And I'm a dork for dinosaurs and my series of graphic novels. I guess I'm a dork for dancing. <laughs> Later on in the series, Henry asks Tina to join the debate team. Tina destroys their first debate, and Henry is so impressed with her that he asks her out on a date. Unfortunately, Tina isn't really attracted to him, so their relationship is pretty short. You're using our first negative to tell me you kissed Duncan? And to break up with you. And to break up with me? Oh. Josh. 
When Tina first sees a glimpse of Josh through the milk curtains at the dairy aisle at Fresh Feed, she falls immediately head over heels in love. She's determined to find him, and Louise helps her write quite possibly the best Miss Connections ad ever. Me, a freak in the fridge. You, a freak with a freaked up finger. If you want to see where this can go, come to Bob's Burgers Wednesday between 3 and 5 p.m. Freak to be you and me? When the dudes start rolling in, the only way Tina can figure out who her mystery milkman is is by shoving the old band-aid her crush dropped onto their fingers, like a gross version of Cinderella. Finally, her Prince Charming finds her hiding in the dairy aisle, and the two of them exchange passionate kisses. When Tina asks Jimmy Jr. to the dance, he snubs her and says that he wants to keep his options open. Don't let him jack you around like that, Tina! His butt's not even that cute! But then, in Boogie's Josh, and Tina is once more ensorcelled by him. He gives her his number and asks her to his performing arts school's dance, but Tina tells him she'll let him know when she hears back from Jimmy Jr. Quit playing games with his heart, Tina! Jeju ends up saying he'll go with her when Tina tells him about Josh's proposal, and finds herself deciding to go with Josh because obviously Jimmy Jr. only wanted what he couldn't have. They start fighting over Tina, and I'm not gonna lie, she gets a little turned on. Whoa, guys, slow down. Is this really worth it? Come on, Tina. We've got reservations at a frozen yogurt stand. Jimmy and Josh finally face down in the ultimate middle school dance battle, but that just makes it even harder for Tina to choose. How's a girl who loves butts gonna decide between two totally bitchin' dancers? In the end, she decides to pick both, but surprise! Two 14-year-old dudes really don't want to have a devil's threesome with her, so she scares them off. Honestly, it's their loss. Tina's just more sexually mature than they are. We'll come up with a makeout wheel, kind of like a chore wheel. Uh, I don't want to do this. Yeah, me neither. Jonas. Looks like Reggie's deli has a delivery boy, and Tina is ready for it. She fantasizes about riding away with him on the back of his delivery motorcycle, and it doesn't take long for Tina to get obsessed with him. She finds a way to get him to deliver sandwiches to her house, and Jonas ends up giving her a ride home on the back of his bike. Jonas ends up being an a-hole by pulling at Tina's heartstrings and manipulating her into throwing a party at the restaurant while her parents are out of town. Then the douche wad bails when they get in trouble and tells her to meet him at the Cove by the lighthouse, but only if she brings him more free burgers. And, uh, hey, if you come, uh, bring some burgers with you. Here's a little one. Got a little mouth burger. In order to convince him she's cool, Tina tries to break into the lighthouse, but then the dudes ditch her when the cops come. Dicks. Jonas turns out to be exactly as lame as you think he is, and returns only for his motorbike after leaving Tina to get arrested by beach rangers. Luckily, Teddy's there to save the day, and throws that jerk hole's motorcycle into the drink. Don't mess with my girl Tina, Jonas. That's what you get. What is that kid doing in the water? Rescuing a drowning moped. Well, God, it's late. Bedtime, kids. Bedtime. Jeff. When an exterminator comes to the restaurant to kill some bugs in the basement, he tells Linda and the kids that there's actually a ghost living in there. They decide to perform a seance called Ghost into a Vessel, where they could trap him and remove him from their home. The ghost tells them that his name is Jeff and that he's a 13-year-old boy. Tina is clearly into it. They lure him into the shoebox, and Louise decides to convince Tina that Jeff the ghost like likes her. Tina takes Jeff to the butterfly exhibit, and the two of them talk about their feelings. AKA, Tina has a one-sided conversation with herself on a bench. Jeff, you tell me if you were just a box, right? You're just a box, aren't you? I'm on a date with a box. When one of the butterflies lands on her lips, she's convinced that it's Jeff's spirit trying to kiss her. Unfortunately, Jeff leaves a message on the bathroom mirror breaking up with Tina and asking Tammy out. Tina overhears Louise confessing to Jean and her mom that she made Jeff up, and they end up pranking Tammy at the cemetery. <laughs> R.I.P. Jeff. But the things we wanted from Jeff were real. I wanted a boy to pay attention to me and never leave my side. Huh? Daryl. When Tina needs a tutor for math, she turns to Daryl, the smartest kid in school. He promises to help her study if she agrees to go to the school Valentine's Day dance with him. He's a boy, so of course Tina agrees. It turns out that Daryl actually wants to go with an eighth grader named Rosa Bautista, and theorizes that if they win the Cupid's Couple Award, Jimmy Jr. will want to date Tina as well. Daryl even writes and performs her a song on the dance floor before they smooch beneath the disco ball. Which you were in all my classes, and when we kiss, we hit our glasses. They end up winning Cupid's Couple because they're so adorable together. But as it usually goes in Tina's short-lived relationships, he's too preoccupied during their moment looking for Rosa. They have to have a very public fake breakup, and Daryl and Rosa actually start hanging out. The problem is, now Tina has actual feelings for Daryl. It gets even more complicated when Jimmy Jr. comes around to ask Tina to go bowling now that she's single. 
but even though she's on a date with Jimmy Jr., Tina isn't falling all over his butt like she normally would. Instead, she's watching Daryl and Rosa get all smoochy in the next lane over. Of course, Tina freaks out and spills the beans about their secret fake relationship, and Jimmy Jr. and Rosa both get weirded out and leave. Daryl explains to Tina that they have nothing in common, and Tina realizes that they had a good thing going and that she should get them back together. Remedial at love, remedial at math. Jordan Hagen. Of course, Tina can't help herself when a cute teen boy throws his lips in her direction. Even if it's Jordan Hagen, aka Ghost Boy, who sucks face harder than the face hugger from Alien. Oh, I again. You're so wild, Tina. She meets Jordan while she's trying to impress Jimmy Jr. by being a bad girl, but ends up having a lot of fun graffitiing Ghost Boy everywhere. Ah, there's nothing like a diamond in the rough with a can of spray paint, recklessly turning the city into a ghost town. Even though he's a bad kisser, he's just the kind of guy I would have dated just to piss my parents off. He might be dorky on the outside, but on the inside, he burns with the passion of the fires of a thousand Banksies. She was my first kiss and my last. You painted over my heart, Tina. Jordan, someday you're gonna meet a great girl who doesn't care about good kissing or the law or anything. Spin the bottle, guys. After everyone in school accuses Tina of being anti-makeout, she ends up spearheading a game of spin the bottle at Jocelyn's makeout party. We don't have to not kiss, we just have to smart kiss. And now I'm going to kiss everyone in this row. Dude, what? Tina, no! What? Ow, ow, Tina. She ends up making out with a bunch of dudes like any horny teenager should. What? It's a rite of passage. Joe Harrison. When Tina makes eye contact with Joe Harrison, she senses that something more might be going on between them and decides to land herself in detention to find out for sure. She spends detention trying to make eye contact with him, but that plan quickly devolves into one of her boy fantasy musical numbers. When our eyes met, I was like, hey, now I bet that Joe could be the one. Tina. What? In the end, Tina decides that they just don't have the same eyeball chemistry as their first glance, so she uses her breakup eyes to end things. Brett. While Tammy is staying with the Belchers for spring break, Tina is trying to earn her Thunder Girl helpfulness badge. This means that when a cute guy named Brett comes to town, Tammy gets first dibs. Tina offers to help Tammy text Brett, but gets a little carried away and starts having full conversations with him, even though he thinks the texts are coming from Tammy. Also, how come a day can be sunny, but a night can't be moony? Eh? <gasps> That's a freaking great text. Ah! Brett is exactly as weird as Tina, and he's obsessed with horses and asking weird philosophical questions. While Tammy and Brett are on their date, Tina coaches Tammy through their conversations via walkie-talkie. Eventually, Tina comes clean and lets Brett know that it was her he was falling for all along. At first, he's upset, but thankfully, Tammy talks him into going out with Tina, and they end up taking a stroll down the beach together. Damn, we're gonna kiss. Oh my god, did that seagull just cough up a tooth? Damon and all the guys at the Boys For Now audition. As Tina's trying to get a huge stack of napkins out of the trunk of the car and into the restaurant, she accidentally bumps into Damon, a cute dude auditioning to be Boo Boo's replacement in Boys For Now. Obviously, she ends up fantasizing about him, but this time, it's different. Tina is completely convinced that Damon is the one, and decides to chase him down at the audition so that they can start there forever together. She dresses up as a dude to try to find him, but here's the thing. Tina isn't a one-man kind of woman. She ends up falling in love with a bunch of different boys, proving her family right that she's a little bit boy crazy. First, there's a dude that asks her for gum. Then she meets a dude named Chad in the bathroom and develops a very long-winded fantasy about how she'll friendzone him at first, but that later they'll fall in love. There's a little bit of 16 candles and a little bit of middle school drama, but I love it. Next, Tina finds herself exploring her kinkier side in a fantasy with Jesse, who in her mind is a high-powered businessman who can really show her who's boss. There's a whole lot of the secretary vibes going on in this one, and I'm here for it. Finally, our girl catches up to Damon, but before she can stop herself, she starts fantasizing about his best friend Hayden. Tina ultimately realizes that she really is boy crazy and decides to just embrace it. Why have one boy when you could have an entire circle of them? Why not five? You'll feel alive! Or even six! Yeah, get your kicks! Bruce the Goose. When Jimmy Jr. doesn't keep his promise to ask Tina to the 8th grade night of the living dance, Tina's love life takes a bizarre and unexpected turn. She ends up falling in love with a goose at the local park who some weird wharf dude has named Bruce. He explains that Bruce has imprinted on Tina, which is basically just a grown man encouraging a 14-year-old girl to fall in love with a goose, but hey, cartoon logic. They first meet cute when they bump into each other right by a bench, and it turns out that Bruce is a really good listener. And that's why I think we should send all boys to Canada and call up Manida and never go there. 
But Jimmy Jr. still acting weird and refusing to ask Tina to the dance, Tina quits dance committee in a rage and uses her newfound free time to get closer to Bruce. But because the Belchers are the Belchers, they end up reading Tina's diary with a new erotic friend fiction chapter about falling in love with a goose. Like Nerdwire, the Belcher family doesn't judge Tina for wanting to make babies with a waterfowl. They just want to help her heal her broken heart and, you know, maybe get a little less weird. Louise and Jean get Jimmy Jr. to tell Tina the truth, that he pulled a butt muscle trying to do that one move from Save the Last Dance, and that he was too embarrassed to tell her. Bruce jealously attacks the dance in retaliation, but gets his friendship bracelet caught, and Jimmy Jr. has to rescue him. Bruce violently attacks Jeju, and in the end, Tina gives him a sweet little smooch on the cheek to thank him. Tina ends up letting Bruce go, and the episode wraps up with Tina and Jimmy Jr. in a really sweet place. So, is your butt okay? Oh, it really hurts. Should I take a look at it, or? Uh, I, I don't know. I guess I should probably just go to the doctor. Right, right. Any guy who's willing to further injure his own butt just to zombie dance with you is a keeper. Bruce, over there, hot goose. Let's see if you two get along. Oh, wow, you get along really well. Slow down, guys. Don't even, don't. Those are all of Tina's boo things from seasons one through nine of Bob's Burgers, but I wanna know which one of her crushes you think is best for her. And don't say Jimmy Jr. His butt is cute, but that answer is too obvious. Like and subscribe to Nerdwire, click to the left of my face for more videos, and don't forget to check us out on Plex and Roku.